everyone, I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen and today we have another episode of What's for Dinner. Tonight we're going to be making this delicious garden style pork ragu and that just means it's a really beautiful thick meaty sauce that's chock full of vegetables and slow cooked all day. We're going to be making this in our slow cooker with um, vegetables, some of them that have come out of my garden and some of them that came off the shelf and today this is what's for dinner we're serving it over a beautiful chunky rigatoni and we're serving it with some homemade italian bread let's go see what goes into this So what we're going to do this time is instead of using a store-bought sauce i'm going to go ahead and build a sauce from scratch using um, two 28 ounce cans of pureed tomatoes. So this is just a uh, crushed tomato or tomato puree. And then we're also going to use a, I believe this is a six ounce can of tomato paste, just your standard small can of tomato paste. We're also going to be putting a lot of flavor in here. So I'm using a small jar, which is about 10 ounces of roasted red pepper strips. I'm also using a 10 ounce jar of Kalamata olives that are pitted and sliced. And Rick loves Kalamata olives. I bet you couldn't guess. Then we're also gonna use a quarter of a cup of sugar, a quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar, and then we're gonna use these fresh veggies. I have two stalks of celery that I just chopped up, one medium bell pepper out of my garden that I diced, a medium-sized sweet onion that I chopped, and two carrots that I grated on the box grater, and about six cloves, or equivalent thereof, of minced garlic. We're also gonna be using some flavorizers in this little jar. These are four large bay leaves from my garden. And then I also have a tablespoon of Italian seasoning, a tablespoon of dried basil, a tablespoon of dried oregano, a tablespoon of roasted garlic powder, and a teaspoon of dried thyme. But you can flavor this up however you like. Then our two main meaty ingredients are going to be, I have those four portobello mushroom caps that I bought at Sam's Club. I just went ahead and I diced those up. We bought these a couple of weeks ago and I forgot about them because I put them in the extra fridge so they really need to get used. So this is a really great way to do that. Throw them in the crock pot in a stew or a ragu in this case and they're gonna add meatiness and deep, deep flavor. And then we also have one package which is about two and a half pounds of uh, pork tenderloin. So when you buy a pork tenderloin, you usually get two of them in the package and then I just dice that up, you know, like stew meat size. We're gonna start with our sauce. So there's our two cans of sauce. Now if you have a garden and you are currently knee deep in tomatoes, feel free to use your own tomato sauce. There goes all of our tomato paste. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good judge. You don't have to totally whisk that in because as it cooks, it's gonna break down anyway and it's gonna thicken up and flavor everything. And So you don't have to spend too much time being concerned about that. Then we're gonna go ahead and add everything else. Okay, the last thing I wanna add that I forgot because I have been thinking about it the whole time I was putting the ingredients out for you is make sure you get the Parmesan rind out of the freezer and that's the only thing I forgot to do. So, <laughs> Parmesan rind, you can get these at your Better Deli stores or the, gro the, the good cheese section in your Better grocery store. Just stick it right on in there um, you know they get those big wheels of Parmigiano Reggiano? They almost always, when they grind up a wheel of those, they almost always sell the rind separately. I know they do at Whole Foods and they do at Harris Teeter. So keep your eyes open. They don't always have it, so if you see it, stock up on it. It will last literally forever in your freezer. And what it will do is it will break down a little, but not all the way. You don't want to eat it. It's just going to add this delicious, mellow, salty, briny flavor in here and it's gonna be delicious okay I'm gonna pop the lid on this and I'm gonna put it on high and I'm gonna cook this for six to eight hours or until the meat is falling apart I will bring you back when it's time to um, check it for salt and seasonings and then we will fix you a plate of this delicious garden style ragu with pork tenderloin Okay, here you go. This has been cooking for approximately 
six hours and it is perfect it is thickened up a bit I did kind of uh, put the lid off kilter for the last hour or so just so that some of that residual moisture would cook out of there This is our Parmesan rind. It has done everything it can for us So we're gonna be discarding that and then this is beautiful thick delicious Garden style ragu that's chock full of veggies and that pork tenderloin cubes And I can't wait to serve this because my mouth is watering and I'm ready to eat So we're gonna meet you back at the counter and we will fix you a dish of this beautiful pork tenderloin garden style ragu There you have it. There is our beautiful garden style pork ragu and I gotta tell you I'm excited to eat this for dinner tonight. Oh The meat is just falling apart. It's beautiful. It's flaking up absolutely great And this is super hot, but I think we're still gonna have Rick give it a taste we um Take one for the team. Yeah we tasted the sauce after it had been cooking for about four hours and it was incredible. It's gone another two hours now and thickened up just a bit and I'm excited to eat this for dinner. Wow. That is really good. It's really hot, isn't it? Oh, bad. Mm. The meat just melts in your mouth. That is outstanding. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Now, I'm going to be putting a sprinkle of Parmesan on mine. Rick doesn't ever prefer that, so. And this shot that you always see here is usually Rick's plate. So we're going to leave it unadulterated tonight. Mm. And that is how you make a beautiful garden ragu with pork tenderloin. Like I said, you could use any kind of meat in here. It's up to you. It's really cachetory like and tasting because of all those fresh vegetables and the olives and the red, bell, uh, the red pepper strips that we put in there. It's absolutely stunning. You're going to love it. I want to thank you for joining me today and seeing how I make this beautiful pork ragu. Um, if you like the video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the real food for real people, real easy recipes that we present every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on our YouTube channel and straight from our kitchen. I hope that you give this garden style pork ragu a try sometime soon. And if you do, let me know in the comments below how you liked it. And until next time, I'll see ya. All right, we have had this on the stove between 10 and 15 minutes now, and the corn has literally started to sing a little bit. Watch it not make the noise now, but in any case, when you can when, when you can hear it sizzling, and it's gonna start maybe sounding a little like it's squeaking, that's when you know your corn is done. I have tasted this, and so has Rick, and we agree that we're